Hello everyone and welcome back to the sessions on financial reporting. Friends, in this class of financial reporting, we are continuing with the topic financial instruments and this is the second lecture on financial instruments. Previous class, that is in the first lecture, we have learned some important definitions and application of those definitions. We have learned lots of examples clarifying the meaning of what is a financial asset, what is a financial liability, what is an equity instrument and we have also learnt what is the financial instrument itself. Now friends, uh, in this class we are entering into the calculation related matter and something very important begins with this class and that is about concept of effective interest rate. So this concept effective interest rate it is nothing new for you. If you can recall in days 23 borrowing costs we started learning about effective interest rate right there. I have explained you in detail what is effective interest rate and we have learned application of this effective interest rate right from that in days. However, here I will still define what is effective interest rate. By the way, previous class we have learned lots of definitions as per NDS 32. The definition of effective interest rate is not covered under NDS 32. It is given under NDS 109. So technical definition and all would be more of a formality. Let me explain the core concept. Effective interest rate would be such an interest rate which will be a discounting rate which can match the future cash flows with the present values. Basically what we generally call as IRR of any kind of cash flow arrangement. So we have something as a present value and something as future cash flows a rate that can connect these two. That means a rate that can discount the future cash flows to their present values. So let me give you one simple example of what could be an effective interest rate. Suppose I am issuing debentures and I have committed to pay interest or coupon payments over next five years of the life of the debenture and at end of fifth year I am going to redeem those debentures. So the redeemable value and all those coupon payments or interest payments are all the future cash outflows against that. I would have obtained the net proceeds on issue of these debentures. So a discounting rate which can convert all the cash flows matching with this present value that means in other words the present value needs to match with that net proceeds that rate of discounting will be considered as effective interest rate. Now friends throughout application of NDSs you will be finding that effective interest rate has its involvement almost everywhere because the moment there comes concept of time value of money where the time value of money becomes material it is effective interest rate that will play its role. Let us go back to NDS 16 that is property plant and equipment. What did you learn over there? You have learned a situation over there if you have acquired an asset and the payment for that asset is deferred beyond the normal credit terms. Suppose you are acquiring the asset today and you have to make the payment over three years time. So it is implied that whatever payments you are making over three years time are all future payments and they must include interest component. So what we do is we find something called CPE that is cash price equivalent. We recognize the asset at initial measurement and that initial measurement is not the total amount to be paid. The total amount to be paid will be split into two components. One that represents the present value of those all payments and the other component is the interest component or financing component. So this financing component is measured through nothing but this effective interest rate. So friends we have a lot to talk about this effective interest rate. And this is the topic where effective interest rate will play its role at a very high degree. So let us now stick back to NDS 32 what we were discussing in the previous lecture and let us continue with the same thing now 
with application of this concept of effective interest rate. Now, suppose my company has received some services that means my company's name is X limited and X limited has received some services from Y limited payment for the same has to be made after three years and the amount payable is 10 lakhs. So, I bring forward the facts of the case like this. I have taken services from another company Y limited. I have to settle the payment after three years. The invoice amount which is payable after three years is rupees 10 lakhs. So, 10 lakh is the future amount payable from X limited to Y limited fact. Now, because it is payable after three years and three years is a considerable time, time value of money becomes a material factor over here and cannot be ignored. So, as per the requirement of India S 37 provisions, contingent liabilities and contingent assets, even there you have learned one thing that the recognition will be made at the present value. That is the recognition of that obligation will be made at present value. And again to arrive at the present value, you have to apply effective interest rate. So, coming back to our example, I am X limited. I have acquired services from Y limited and I have to settle the payment for the same and the amount that I have to pay after three years is rupees 10 lakhs. Now, three years time is a substantial period of time and should be considered as giving material effect to time value of money. Because the time value of money is becoming material, you are going to recognize the obligation today. Why obligation has been recognized today? Because the services have been obtained today. Y limited has rendered the services and therefore X limited has an obligation to pay. Obligation to pay 10 lakhs, but the recognition made today will not be 10 lakhs. It will be the present value of 10 lakhs. Let us assume that such present value when computed using effective interest rate works out to 7 lakh 50 thousand. So, rupees 7 lakh 50 thousand will be the initial recognition of that liability that will be indicating as a present obligation correct. And now in my accounting records, I have a liability towards Y limited that is only 7 lakh 50 thousand. Therefore, the corresponding debit will be given to cost of services and cost of services will be rightly recognized at rupees 7 lakh 50 thousand only. Thereafter, year on year basis, when we start applying this effective interest rate, there will be calculation of interest component for this deferred payment, correct? One party has rendered the services. We have not made the payment immediately. We have delayed the payment. Payment will be made after three years. Interest component is implied. If interest component is implied, that interest component will be worked out using effective interest rate, the same rate through which we have discounted the future cash flow. So, obviously, if you go for unwinding and winding of the interest calculation at the same rate, the calculation obviously will be matching. In other words, when I keep on adding interest component to that initial measurement of 750,000 at the same effective interest rate, obviously the maturity value after three years will be exactly 10 lakhs. So, what will happen? 750,000 recognized immediately as an obligation with a corresponding debit given to cost of services that we have received from Y limited. Later on, year after year, we will recognize interest expenses and the corresponding credit will be given to Y limited so that the liability towards Y limited starts building up. It will start increasing and after three years completed that liability amount will finally rise to the payable amount exactly to rupees 10 lakhs and every year the interest component will be charged to p and L, but that interest component is not the cost of services that we have taken from Y limited. It is interest component. It is an interest expenses which will be charged to p and L. So, friends, whatever example we have just discussed, if we can put it in the form of question and answer, it will be better understood and therefore, let us begin with questions. Let us take up question number 5. Let us read this question. X limited undertakes a contract under which it has to pay rupees 10 lakhs to Y limited 
towards the cost of services that X Limited received from Y Limited. This amount is payable on 31-3-2020. Services were rendered by Y Limited on 1-4-2017. If effective rate of interest is 10% per annum, show necessary accounting entries in the books of X Limited towards recognition and settlement of this obligation. Now friends, uh, based on what we have discussed some time back about the concept of effective interest rate, notice one thing that services were rendered by Y Limited on 1-4-2017. Now obviously X Limited is under obligation to pay rupees 10 lakhs to Y Limited. But this payment has to be made on 31-3-2020. So this is the payment due date and this is the date on which the amount has accrued towards this expense. As a result, if you find the gap between these two dates, it is a clear gap of three years. That classifies the nature of this liability, the nature of this obligation as a long-term liability or a long-term obligation. And as per the requirement of India's 32, the long-term liability or long-term obligation has to be recognized at its present value. For this purpose, the effective rate of interest is given as 10% per annum. So, 10 lakhs will be the amount payable after 3 years, but the present value of this 10 lakh will be the liability amount that will be recognized now. So, what will happen to the present value and this amount difference? That difference between present value and this future payment will be recognized as interest cost over the period of 3 years. So friends, let us see how to present the solution. In your solution, you are first going to mention that X Limited has a contractual obligation to pay cash to Y Limited. This satisfies the definition of financial liability as per India's 32. Then the date on which such financial liability has accrued is 1-4-2017 and the date on which it is expected to be settled is 31-3-2020. That is after three years from the point of accrual. As per India's 32, long term financial liabilities should be measured at present value of obligation. The PV factor at 10% per annum for three years, if you can calculate, it will be 0.751315. And finally, the present value of that liability will be the amount payable in future, that is 10 lakhs, multiplied by the present value factor. The present value of the obligation comes to 7,51,315. So friends, from the recognition viewpoint, it is only this amount which indicates the present value of the obligation shall be recognized on 1-4-2017. Whereas the amount actually payable is rupees 10 lakhs. So the gap between this present value and the amount actually payable in future, that is gap between 7,51,315 and rupees 10 lakhs will indicate the interest cost and that interest cost will be spread over three years as an expense and will be charged off to PNL as and when incurred. On the other side, this will be the cost of services along with the obligation that will be recognized on 1st April 2017. Let us move ahead and calculate the interest expenses for the next three years. So along with the interest expenses, we would also work out the outstanding balance towards that liability. So what we do is we just present a small table where we mention the balance at the beginning and balance at the end of each year and the gap between those two will be identified as interest cost for that year. So don't forget that the effective interest rate in the question is given as 10%. So irrespective of whatever be the arrangement between the two parties, as per the requirement of India's 32, this entity X Limited has to recognize its interest cost at 10% of the outstanding balances. That means in year 1, the opening balance outstanding was 7,51,315. The interest cost for that first year will be 10% of this amount that will be 75,131 and therefore the balance at the end will be aggregate of this two opening balance plus interest accrual for that year 
and that comes to 8,26,446. Second year, this will be the opening balance that is 8,26,446 and interest will be accrued at 10% on this outstanding balance now. So, can you notice one thing? Compounding of interest is happening over here. So, 82,645 is the interest cost for second year that added to the balance at the beginning of second year what you get is the balance at end of second year or the same will be considered as balance at the beginning of third year on that when you add 10 percent interest cost for the third year what you finally get is the amount payable at the end of third year which must be brought at par with the actual amount payable that is rupees 10 lakhs all right friends you would have finished writing these calculations let us move ahead and show the accounting entries so accounting entries on 1 4 2017 it will be just recognition of cost of services and against this cost you are going to recognize the amount payable to y limited notice one thing the amount payable to y limited is actually 10 lakhs but what we are recognizing at the beginning is just the present value so eventually you are going to provide a total credit of 10 lakhs to y limited definitely but the cost of services will be only 7 lakh 51,315 the remaining component of your expense should not be considered as cost of services but should be considered as interest cost over the three years time so this will be the accounting entry on 1 4 2017 that is the beginning of first year now let us arrive at the end of first year that is 31st March 2018. We will recognize the interest cost and the amount will be further credited to Y Limited's account so that the balance outstanding towards Y Limited increases by this amount of interest cost. And finally the interest cost which is recognized as expense will be charged off to p &L at the end of first year. Now similar set of entries will be passed at end of each year. When I say similar set of entries means what we have recognized on 31st March 2018 same will be done on 31st March 2019 as well as 31st March 2020. So it will be just a duplication of these entries again. Here the question has emphasized on recognizing all the components that is why we are going to show in most cases in examination you can simply write similar entries will be passed at end of each year and in examination generally they may not specify that you pass accounting entry at end of each year so here we are showing accounting entries on 31 3 2019 same thing and the same thing will be recorded even on 31st march 2020 so friends this being the very first question I am showing these entries next question onward I am just going to provide a small note that similar entries will be passed at end of each year. Alright friends after recording all these components payable and charging the same two expenses we have finally made Y limited's account at par with the amount payable that is rupees 10 lakhs and let us now settle that amount by making the payment. So that will be paid on 31-3-2020. So Y Limited's account debit to bank account on 31-3-2020. Passing this entry, you are done with your obligations.